If Tottenham were ever going to build a player statue outside their stadium, it would be of Sir Harry Kane. It's mad to think that both him and Jamie Vardy were warm in Leicester's bench back in 2013, but ever since then, it has been a meteoric rise to the top as he's been the Premier League top goal scorer in a couple of seasons. His club legend status has been certified, all without winning a major trophy at 28. With Kane now entering his prime, showcasing his desire to leave the club, all the big boys are in contention of landing the world class English striker and leading the odds right now a Man City because basically they're the only club in the world that can afford him. Nothing's official yet at the time of recording but the more time passes the more Kane's headed for the exit door. That's what today Sir BCHD is back and is on a mission to find Tottenham's Harry Kane replacement in order to fill the striker's boots and potentially even become better and who knows maybe win some silverware. That's right we're back at it again with another one of these replacing videos. We've arrived here in North London after we've replaced Sancho at Dortmund and replaced the Guerrero at Man City. Now we've got ourselves a brand new challenge with a team that just seem allergic to winning trophies. You should know how these videos go by now. We are putting up the player as we're replacing them on the transfer list. We need to sell him for all he's worth. First in best dress to secure the Englishman's services. We just need to get rid of him. It's been fun whilst it lasted Spurs fans, but all good things must come to an end. What's going to happen to the North London outfit when they lose their main talisman up top who has been leading them for so long now? The club captain. That's what we're here to do. Fix the situation situation, find the perfect unknown one to kid. Trust me, after Kane's sale, we're going to be left with an absolute war chest to spend. Not only acquiring the one to kid we desire, but also improving the team around him. Forming a solid unit, I think something that Spurs have lacked for a couple of years now. Let's get through the summer transfer window and see what kind of offers come our way. That is what we wanted to see. It's only taken 11 days into this transfer window and it's played right into our hands. Man City have offered us 140.1 million pounds. The citizens throwing their entire bank account at us. This sacrificing all the oil money and financial fair play rules to land the Englishman and we're going to have to accept it. And it looks like the other side of Manchester will be acquiring yet another massive asset. The deed is done. There it is. Manchester City unveil their brand new signing and it's going to be Harry Kane switching on over to the Premier League. A lot of people were saying that he wouldn't do that to Tottenham. He wouldn't go to another major Premier League competitor but there it is. Real Madrid, Barcelona, PSG, they didn't show any interest and Man City are going to be looking damn near unstoppable. With a deadly attack like this, they should walk the Premier League. They've gifted him the number 15 and it's our mission to try and stop them from winning the league with a brand new Wonder Kid replacement. We'll be tracking Harry Kane's career throughout this video and seeing how he gets along over at the Etihad. However, we've got a couple of options in terms of replacements. I was thinking maybe try still a fellow Man City talent and star that they were kind of underestimating. Lucas Nemencia could have been a bright little option. However, he's already 21 at 74 overall. Unfortunately, he is out on loan. So that idea got scrapped and I thought, you know what, hey, let's go for Leonardo Campana. The Ecuadorian striker out at Wolves, who is currently 20 years of age, has got a face scan and is a bit of a similar build to Harry Kane. I'd say he's a South American Kane and we try going for the offer and unfortunately he is out on loan, so the similar Kane archetype can't be purchased and the Ecuadorian will not be available in Season 1. That's when I thought, hey, let's look a bit closer to home. Let's see what kind of talent Spurs have on the roster. And they've got quite a couple of generational talents up and about. Troy Parrott. That is right, we're going to be recalling the Irishman from his loan stint at Ipswich Town. He was also sent down on loan at Millwall last season and the brand new, still only 18 year old wonder kid will be returning to Spurs as we try to convert him into the Irish Harry Kane. He's still showing great potential and he's still a teenager. There you go, automatically gets assigned the number 10 and if things don't go to plan, we've got plan C right here, Dane Scarlett. I've seen a lot of hype for this guy on Twitter, a lot of Spurs fans are gassing him up and who knows, maybe he can be their kind of Mason Greenwood, we can convert him into a winger or midfield who knows what the future prospects will be for this guy as we've also got Vinicius as a backup. But they'll be have to competing and be on top of their A game if they're going to compete with Vinicius now, the best striker at the club. We might need him to help us in season one, but let's get these guys trained up. Even though he's six foot one, I feel like he's a bit more of a nimble character. His body type allows him to be quick. Going to have to improve on that sprint speed, acceleration, pace. We're applying the mobile striker development plan for season one. And with Dane Scarlett, we're going to assign him the poacher development plan and try and get that stamina up. Meanwhile, increase a lot of the shooting attributes. I've never really gone ahead with this strategy of having a plan A and plan B. We've got Troy Parrott, our main priority. Let's hope, fingers crossed, dynamic potential can do its job. Otherwise, we're going to have to focus on the 16-year-old, which might be a little bit of more of a long-term video. We haven't had to outsource. He's a little bit more closer to home than we expected. Now, let's go out and try to strengthen the Spurs squad and upgrade the team where needed. Our first pickup in this little first season summer transfer haul, we've got Bubakara Kamara, who is arriving from Marseille, the French midfielder for now. He's a CDM. I'm going 
to convert him into a center back because we've got an aging defense, Alderweireld. Don't know if Sanchez and Dia are up for the task. And for 19 million pounds, you know it's not a BCHD video without a swap deal, as we've included Eric Dia in the deal plus 19 million pounds as the Englishman heads the other way. It is swap deal central right here as we're replacing yet more Deadwood involved in this James Madison situation. This transfer deal is going to involve Deli Ali plus 28.6 million pounds to Leicester. He's going to be our brand new playmaker in that number 10 role, the middle of the park, creating things, making things happen. He's going to be one of the main midfield outlets who I think can really provide that attacking creative spark to this team. Wave your goodbyes to Deli Ali. Mourinho couldn't revive his career and in the past couple seasons, he has just been a shadow of himself. We're multitasking here. We're clearing the dead wood, meanwhile getting in upgrades and replacement for those players. And one of them is going to be Lucas Digne, the Frenchman who will be joining us from Everton as we weaken a fellow Premier League opponent. We gain a brand new starting left back. There he is arriving onto the scene. He is going to be a major addition to the squad and is going to allow our defense not only to be a solid back four, but also provide an attack and threat down the left hand side. We might as well just rename this video the Swap Deals Only Challenge with Spurs because we've only gone and done it again. Eric Lamella, who I believe is departing this summer in real life, the Argentine who was bought all those years ago, will be swapped out for Anthony of Ajax. The Wonder Kid is an overpowered beast this year in career mode, and the exciting prospect will be joining us here in North London. It's exactly what this team needs right now. A bit of South American flair and skill. He's been a long serving member at the club, but finally, Eric Lamella is headed out the door. He was Spurs' hat trick hero against Ajax in the Champions League a couple years back, sending the club to their first ever Champions League final. Unfortunately, we're going to have to cash in on the Brazilian Lucas Moura, who will be departing to Man City again. They just love picking players off Tottenham. 24.2 million pounds. We've done that to facilitate some other transfers in this window. He has been a major transfer target for both Juventus and Arsenal this summer after his heroic displays for Italy at the Euros. It is Manuel Locatelli arriving from Sassuolo as we activated his 53 2 million pound release clause. The Italian box to box midfielder will be joining us outright from Sassuolo. And I've done this mainly just to piss off some Arsenal fans. I don't know, no hard feelings, but it's just funny to see him being linked to Arsenal all summer. And now we get to see him in a Spurs shirt. We'll see if he can develop himself in the midfield. Kind of a long term. I should have done a swap deal with Sissoko, actually. Nonetheless, we move as he provides a bit more quality and technical ability than the likes of Harry Winks and Sissoko. I think he's going to prove himself to be a valuable acquisition in the future. And finally, last but certainly not least, it is. PSG's brand new Moroccan Archaf Hakimi after one season at Inter winning the league conquering Italy he was sold for big bucks and I'm pretty sure we've nearly replicated his real life price tag 74.5 million pounds we're going to be acquiring the right midfielder I might convert him into a right back who knows he's such a dynamic player that just bosses the right hand side and we have just enough money left in the transfer kitty in order to bring him to North London now look at those signings after Kane's departure if you compare that to what Tim Sherwood brought in after selling Bale for big money it is literally like a night and day. The only good player to come out of that was Christian Eriksen. Six world-class ballers in every department besides attack. This has definitely been a window to remember. This has to go down as one of the busiest transfer windows in Premier League history. So much squad turnover. Harry Kane was one of their own and now he's off to Man City as we spent £258.4 million with a total profit of £164 million. We're going to end it off there. Deadline day is now over and we can focus on the season as Harry Kane did end up going down as the most expensive transfer this window. Like I said, Digne will be starting at left back. We're starting off Kamara at centre back because we're converting him into a centre half. Hakimi, who we might be converting back to a right back. Madison will be starting in the middle. An extremely productive transfer window. Now let's apply our focus back to our main man, replacing Harry Kane and that is Troy Parrott. Let's simulate season one and see if the Irishman can get some goals on the board. Here's how the first season went for Spurs without Harry Kane and they've actually performed better without him than actually with him. And they finished above Man City with 64 Four points. Oh my god, that is that is actually crazy. How have the citizens ended up there? As United win the league, Leicester finish in second, and Tottenham claim a Champions League spot. This Premier League table is just all over the place. Let's check in on our boy Troy, and he's got up a plus six this season, and that's what I was focused on. As long as we get a great start, like season one is the most important season in these career sims. As long as they get off to the right foot, he's in excellent form, still showing great potential. Hopefully that status gets upgraded. And he actually scored 22. Uh, 20 goals in the Premier League, but 22 goals overall, 3 assists, 25 goal contributions in 39 appearances. We had the likes of Dane Scarlett coming in off the bench, dropping an average match rating of 7.2. Marvellous stuff from the 19-year-old now, as he's up to 5-star skill moves. We trained him up as a mobile striker all throughout this season, and it's paid off 
wonderfully. We're going to hook him up with a brand new contract. We'll get him a major pay rise as he's gone from prospect to important squad role. That's exactly what he deserves, earning 37k a week and valued at 4 million pounds. His value has taken a boost 150%. Entering the 70s now, he gets to test his abilities on the continental stage here in the Champions League. Let's see where season 2 takes Parrot because clearly, after that campaign, he is well and truly following in the footsteps of Big Harry. Here is how Harry Kane's Premier League season played out with 38 appearances. He's well and truly taken over Aguero's starting striker role. 19 goals and 4 assists. So Troy Parrott has outscored a 90 rated Harry Kane in his prime. They achieved the same 23 goal contributions and I think Spurs fans now are starting to forget about Harry Kane's departure as Sir Beast HD is raising up the next best thing. No way. Major news in season 2. Troy man, you're making me dream. Please don't let me down because I said there was going to be a potential status boost as we head into the next campaign and the Irishman has gone from showing great potential he's just skipped the hole in an exciting prospect part of it and has jumped up straight to has potential to be special so on paper basically he's telling us that he can reach a 90 he can reach the Harry Kane level if not better Tottenham's brand new number 10 is definitely promising the world we're gonna hook him up with a brand new development plan this season we gotta switch things up and make him a complete striker I want to see five star skills five star weak foot improving him technically across the board involving stamina shooting passing and dribbling attributes I think that's going to make him a more all-round player. Like I said, we got down and dirty in season one when it comes to transfers. Now I just want to see this team progress and hopefully they don't have second season syndrome. From finishing as high as third, qualifying for the Champions League and now Spurs have slipped out. Maybe fighting on extra fronts and juggling Champions League football was a bit too much as they were just in touching distance of the top four. Liverpool win the league, Man City back in the Champions League conversation. Well, at least they finished above Arsenal and Chelsea. That's the only positive they can take this season. Over in the Champions Champions League. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, wow, wow. They actually bottled this one. The group could have been way harder. Definitely not the group of death here in Group G. Alongside Real Sociedad, Ajax, and CSKA in Moscow. They just either on goal difference or head-to-head. -head. Go down to the Europa League. And here is where they enter the round of 32. Just getting past Molder. And in the round of 16, they took down RB Leipzig over in the quarters. They defeated Strasbourg. And it came down to the semis. Where Atletico Madrid won on away goals. To secure them a final spot. And to win it in a seven-goal thriller. Maybe we definitely do need to improve the depth in this squad as we're going to take a look at the report. Take a look and see how Parrot has performed. He's still maintained that has potential to be special. And he's gone one better than last season. Not a plus six, a plus seven to his overall from 71 to 78. And he is on the verge of entering the 80s. Still an important first team member. His stats read a little bit like this. With 61 games, he was able to score 24 goals and one assist. 25 goal contributions. He played every single Premier League game, Europa League game, Champions League game. He's not showing any signs of being injury prone whatsoever. And in the complete striker development plan, he was able to get that five-star weak foot pretty easily. In good form as well. And stamina is now up to an 82. One of the most crucial stats in career mode. No attribute is yet to hit into the 90s as he is now valued at 30.5 million pounds. That has been increased from 4 million and is equal to 454% boost. I think the man has earned himself another pay rise. The Irish striker who is firing on all fronts will go ahead and offer him 84k a week. I know that ridiculous release clause I'm going to get rid of because some club are going to be dumb enough to pay that. However, the Harry Kane replacement is well and truly on his way. He was so close to being the club top goal scorer and the golden boot winner out of this squad as Hing Min Sun just pips into the award with 25 goals. It's a brand new season. You know what that means. It's going to be a brand new development plan for our boy Troy Parrott as he enters his third as a Tottenham player. Not target man because that is just not what his game is about. Maybe we shift him over to Poacher. Let's shake things up a little bit here. We'll see how his development gets on with that as Dane Scarlett, the backup, the super sub, will shift him on over to Mobile Striker. I know I said I was done with transfers but one major weakness in this Spurs squad right now. Considering Kamara isn't quite ready, quality wise, we're going to have to go in for Ruben Diaz to really shore up the defense and be our main starter. Man City love purchasing players from Spurs so I thought, you know, why not? Let's return the favor and steal one of their best players for £129.6 million. Pounds. He'll be partnering up with a Frenchman Kamara at the back. That is the Spurs starting 11 headed into the third campaign of us trying to replace Harry Kane. Can Troy Parrott keep up this level of consistency, getting goals and being a reliable goal scorer? We'll have to find out because that Spurs squad surely can maybe challenge for the title, I'm not too sure. We're closing the curtain on yet another season with Parrott Spurs finishing in the top four again. Third place for them, gathering up 74 points. It's hard for them to compete up top with the likes of Liverpool and Man City considering the Citizens had a terrible first season. Now they look to be impossible to stop. Arsenal finish in the top four. Meanwhile, United and Chelsea down in eighth and ninth. No silverware to report on into... Oh, no, there is. 
there is something to report on in the Carabao Cup. Spurs have done a Spurs, and I've got to, I've got to use the video on myself. I know I don't want to, but I'm going to have to. Tottenham, it's the history of the Tottenham. Here in the Europa League, thanks to finishing seventh last year, they've been drawn into Group C with Galatasaray, Slavia Praha, and FCSB. As we continue on over, they defeated Olympiakos 2-1 on aggregate in the round of 16. Over in the round of 32, that is where the European campaign came to an end as Galatasaray, the Turkish outfit, knocked them out 2-1. I actually forgot to do this in Season 2. Here we go, Harry Kane stats, so that we can apply them in context to what Parrot's putting up here at Spurs. We've got him in a probably star-studded Man City team, led by Pep Guardiola. 38 games, played every single Premier League match with 16 goals and 5 assists. He has peaked at a 90 overall and he's entered his prime. He should be producing some of the best stats of his career and output that a 90 rated player should as he is Man City's main striker. I guess he's also won the league with them, so fair play. However, however, the citizens, they aren't done there. They actually want to offer me the job. We've gotten an email. I've just seen it in my notifications. They're offering Sir BCHD. They can see what we're doing here at Spurs. They can see I'm building a dynasty and we've got a wonder kid potentially better than Harry Kane on our hands. There is no way I'm accepting that. The league champions trying to weaken their opposition. However, let's take a look at the main man himself up front. The Irish lad with another plus six to his name still has potential to be special. He is now skyrocketed up to an 84 overall in three seasons. In excellent form, he is Spurs' main striker right now. The backup Scarlet isn't doing too much considering his game time is pretty weak right now. But in terms of stats, he's outperforming Harry Kane. Someone needs to compare this. But how is this comparing to Harry Kane's first three seasons at Spurs? Because Parrot might be equaling those numbers, if not better. 61 games, 33 goals and four assists. Outscoring Kane in the Premier League 100% with 22 goals. But that is 37 goal contributions in 61 matches. We had him deployed on the poacher development plan this season and that has just improved some attacking attributes even more like agility attack positioning now up to a 98 and shot power is so close to being maxed out it's actually quite scary the meteoric rise he has literally replicated what Harry Kane did in real life now valued at 86 million pounds he's received that 156% value boost so we're gonna hook him up with a brand new deal still an important role but no release clause which is very important we all know Robbie Keane the Irish striker is up there in Spurs folklore and it's just a cult hero a lot of the fees are big fan favorite over there now with Troy Parrot on this come up could he reclaim the throne I'm interested to see because in season four he could potentially break through that hundred million pound value which is scary straight into season four we go as you can see Troy Parrot now up to an 85 it hasn't even been a month and he has already gone up and overall not only have we applied the complete striker development plan trying to improve his composure and passing stats but we've also gifted him with the captaincy probably the club's youngest ever captain it might be a big leap it might be a big ask is the youngster out of his depth with the captain's armband I don't think so if he came into this high pressure situation bagging in goals left right and center I think he deserves it leading the lineup top against some of the best defenses in the world let's hope he delivers not only goals but a bit of that Irish luck on our side so that Spurs can go on to win some silverware no transfers this season besides the pre-contract arrival of Golini the Italian goalkeeper from Atalanta who is actually moving to Spurs in real life if the rumors are true so kind of realistic and will replace Loris in the long term if you put things into perspective Troy is only five overall points away from equaling Harry Kane right now standing at a 90 overall. His rating is in touching distance considering he's gone up a plus six at minimum throughout every single season and he could potentially be worth more than Harry Kane come the end of season four. Exciting times here as I'm expecting this squad to go head to head with the citizens for the title. And that's right you can see things correctly finally after all these years of hurt. God knows how many they were. Spurs have won a major trophy here in the Premier League. No one came close besides Aston Villa with 82 points finishing right Runners up, they swept the league. Man City didn't even put up a fight. Harry Kane in the mud, and Troy Parrott and his boys and our Premier League champions. What a turnout for the lads! And Arsenal are finishing down in 15th. That's when you know we are living in one of the weirdest career mode timelines. As we have the Emirates FA Cup, and guess who's facing each other? It is City versus Tottenham. What is going to be an opportunity? Not for one, but two pieces of silverware in the same season. Can they do it and not buckle under pressure in the big dance? I guess we'll have to find. Find out. I actually want to quick simulate that one as he in the Carabao Cup. They couldn't go all the way to the final. The boys got knocked out 2 0 to Premier League runners up Aston Villa in round four. The Champions League saw them drawn into Group C alongside Atletico Madrid, Atalanta, and Dinamo Kiev. Over in the round of 16, they progressed through. However, Bayern Munich stopped them dead in their tracks, winning 3 3 on away goals. Before we check in on Kane's stats this season, most importantly, Troy Parrots as well. We're going to simulate this one and watch it play out. Not only could the Irish hitman be lifted, up the Premier League but also
also the FA Cup at Wembley after we quick sim this one. Let's see if we take them home. And yes, we do. In a 1-0 gutsy win over the Citizens, it was Troy Parrott. It's not letting me scroll up, but he did score in around the 33rd minute. And that was enough to secure the FA Cup and win them the domestic double. What scenes, what a moment. The season we turn him into the captain, they end up winning two pieces of silverware. The ribbons on the famous old trophy will be white. We double up. What a monumental trademark season it was for the Irishman. But before we check in on him, let's take a look at Harry Kane. Is it him declining or is it the team around him not performing up to standards? As you can see there, it's been one of his best performing seasons away from Spurs. 21 goals, 4 assists in the Premier League. The Prem, it's his bread and butter. He should be banging in at least 30 goals a season, you'd expect. But unfortunately, supporting cast hasn't really lived up to the hype. Still maintaining that 90 overall, which Troy Parrott is just 3 overall points away from. And at the top goal scorer at the club, finally, he's become the captain, become a champion. And now the club's highest goal scorer with 32 goals and 2 assists. 34 goal contributions in 59 matches. At 22 years of age, he has proven his world-class stature. He's well and truly on his way to be becoming a Premier League sharpshooter for the ages. Oh, it would have been a such... It would have been the trifecta. It would have been the perfect season. However, Triore of Aston Villa pips Parrot out to the golden boot race. As he scored 25, Parrot got 23, and Harry Kane for City with 21. Well, at least the lad's got something new to look forward to. The golden boot win, and potentially maybe even the Champions League, as he has his first maxed out stat, 99 attack positioning. He knows where to be. He's just always in the right place at the right time, and shot power has now reached 99, as well as ball control. So all in the same season, they've maxed out, and finishing is probably next up. And I thought he was just going to surpass Harry Kane. He hasn't done that. He has smashed him out of the water, blown him away, with now a market valuation of £162 million. It's been his lowest growth season to date, but he's achieved the most, gaining that nine-figure value also with the market valuation boost of 47%. This could be one of the best seasons a Tottenham player ever has had. Not only winning silverware for the team, but as an individual, Tottenham fans are going to be hailing this guy as the god. Well then, here's the team. On to season five we go, where I'm sure they're going to be aiming for bigger and better. Unfortunately, Parrot won't be representing his nation at the 2024 Euros. Ireland not qualifying, meaning we can sort him out in pre-season and apply a new development plan. Just try to get a couple of more stats, maybe maxed out or even improve his pace. Or do we go the target man route and improve his physicality? You know what? Target man it is. I want to keep things uh, switched up. We'll freshen things up. Send him to the gym every day to improve his strength, jumping, heading accuracy and balance. We'll see if this move pays off for force flat on its face if it doesn't let him grow to a 90. It's been a while, but we're digging into some transfer business to start off season five. Just so Parrot and the boys have the furthest possible chance of going far in the Champions League, we are signing up Milan Skriniar from Bayern Munich. The Bavarians have taken away Indombele from us as he submitted a transfer request. And right here, we've got free agent Felipe, formerly of Atletico Madrid fame. He'll be joining us just to provide a bit more quality experience and backup to the back line. The defensive department's getting an overhaul, and that's why we are shifting Bubakara Kamara back into CDM. So he'll be transitioning into a midfielder just to provide the midfield with that depth and just to improve the squad all around and improve his versatility. It's looking like a very strong squad. If they can get Parrot up to that one of the world's best status, the 90s is calling his name. He's been able to up his goal scoring record season after season. So let's see if he can do it on the world's biggest stage. After season four, which was just unthinkable for Spurs fans across the world. Unfortunately, half a decade in, we couldn't back up the Premier League success and defend the title as Man City get their revenge and Harry Kane is the last one laughing. Still runners up in the league is quite the feat. Finishing in the top four, of course, Aston Villa continue their charge up the table. Manchester United down in 10th and Arsenal are just in disarray at the moment, finishing in the bottom half of the table. Over in the FA Community Shield, it's another one to add to the silverware cabinet. We're filling it up. That's our third so far and we could potentially have more here with the FA Cup. No. Over in the Carabao, it is a fourth, baby. We get another piece of bragging rights over Man City and Harry Kane. We are just showing him that we're better off without him. We've found a new replacement and we're doing just fine. Thank you very much. We've done a clean sweep here in England, winning every piece of domestic silverware possible. Let's check in on the Champions League. Group C, they were placed in with Barcelona, RB Salzburg and Lokomotiv Moscow. They were able to get out of that one in second and they got put up against Bayern again and this time they showed them who's boss. Getting revenge for knocking them out in the round of 16 last year. Guaranteed their spot in the quarterfinals and completely obliterated Sevilla. 6-3 on aggregate as we move on over to the semi-finals. It's another classic PSG bottle job and Spurs are in a Champions League final. Just like 2019, six years later, it is a replay of that 2019 final. Liverpool versus Tottenham in an all-English bout. The big dance is about to go off. It has all just come so quickly for Troy Parrott right now. All in the space of five 
five seasons, he's managed to get even better than Harry Kane, reaching a 91 overall. And checking in on Kane, he is still just maintaining the 90s, now hitting 31 years of age. He has peaked, meanwhile, Parrot still has his best years ahead of him. Kane's stats in terms of Premier League season, that's probably his best campaign to date. 29 goals and 4 assists for a league-winning City side. You see their main talisman play every single match. And he well and truly won the golden boot over in the Prem. Parrot all the way down in 8th place with 16 goals. We all know we've got the biggest match in town, but I've just noticed this, how Man City and Kane are in a Europa League final. Alright guys, you can enjoy the Europa League. Parrot and the boys have got some bigger fish to fry, as we're going to check in on how he did this season. The target man development plan did it work in our favour, as the captain has doubled his growth from last season, now becoming one of the world's best with a plus 4 to his overall rating. 91 he stands, better than Harry Kane, and still only at 23 years of age. It is remarkable stuff. A sublime season that produces some scintillating numbers like this. An average match rating of 7.4. 65 games, which is a career high. 31 goals and 2 assists. 33 goal contributions. Not one of his best seasons in terms of goals and assists. Good production is still at that level you'd expect from the Irishman. In terms of his development, strength is up. Balance, jumping and reactions all in the dark greens. And it's just added an extra element to his game. And provides the defenders something a little bit more to think about as his value. It's Parrot to the Moon, baby. 239 million pounds with a 47% value bonus. I don't think we picked the perfect Wonder Kid for this video. We picked the goaded Wonder Kid. Now he's up against it in his first Champions League final. He's proven himself on the continental stage and also winning every piece of domestic silverware. They're worthy Champions League finalists, but can they avenge the wrongs of 2019? Here at the Johan Cruyff Arena, let's get down to business and see how Parrot plays in game and if he's going to be lifting up the trophy. I feel like this is where the replacing series is won and lost. Can they not only be a replacement and perform well, if not better, than the player they're replacing? Or can they go on and forge their own legacy at the club, become a club hero and a legend that can potentially lead the team to silverware and a team like Spurs desperately need it? The Carling Cup was a very long time ago and in the stadium that Lucas Moura scored that famous hat-trick to send them into the final. They're going to be competing for the trophy again, just like in 2019. Here is the Liverpool side. Jurgen Klopp's men are looking very vicious, but trust me, Troy Parrott and his lads are ready to go out to battle. So BCHD's built him up to this level. Now he's got to deliver. And all of a sudden, ball over the top. Surely he's offside. Surely he's offside. Golini's come out and he wasn't offside. Oh, wow. We've just avoided danger there. And an early goal conceded, just like Spurs did back in 2019's final. We've got Hakimi in through to Troy Parrott again. He's going to try set something up here. James Madison has a crack and it's a first time strike from the Englishman and the fans are going wild. Not so much the players but it's James Madison to get the first goal and break the deadlock instantly. Our first major chance all of a sudden a through ball put in from Parrott. He's not really known for his assist throughout his career. However in his five seasons that might be his most important assist he's ever delivered. On a silver platter for Madison who just had the finishing technique of a god. The Irish Irish and English linking up for what is a beautiful Champions League final goal. Oh no, that's a terrible clearance. We shouldn't be passing there in a dangerous area. Diogo Jota, lovely challenge from Hoiberg. Robertson, and all of a sudden, Madison in again. 1v1 versus Zalison on a tight angle, and the Brazilian covers his lines. Who knows, maybe Troy can win the header after all this target man training. He does, and it's cleared away from Daniel Mylan. James Madison lays it off for Kamara. Trying to get out of this sticky situation and the footwork is absolutely immaculate. All of a sudden, James Madison sets up Parrot and we're trying to get that right foot finesse shot off. Sir BCHD knows what they were trying to do, but Parrot snapped at the opportunity and the unorthodox finish nearly worked. All inside, Diogo Jota in a little bit of space and Skriniar's on the yellow card. He backs off and Golini with a massive save. Steps up to the plate with a big boy save. Oh, Kamara heads that right into the box. Hoiberg will clear. And all of a sudden, Sun is the only man forward. Liverpool defenders rushing back. And James Madison ball over the top. Parrot's going to catch him out. And Liverpool trying to race back as it's a race to the finish. A sweaty across. It's a perfect opportunity. There we go. Parrot had his moments, but so far so good. Spurs are 1-0 up. He's got an assist to his name, but he's yet to find the back of the net. James Madison the hero so far. Second half is underway, people. We do not let this slip. And really start to take control of this game. Kamara into Hyunmin's son. Madison ball over the top and it's around Virgil van Dijk. Troy Parrott, what a save from Allison. He took it on the half volley and the Brazilian denied him of a glorious opportunity. Alexander-Arnold got turned inside out and even though it might have been going over, 
Allison with a major palm to it and gets us another corner. Here we go. Another headed opportunity. We've got Troy in there like swimwear and it's brushed the side netting. How many chances does he need to finish his dinner? Jota, Hoiberg. Oh no. This is danger. This smells like danger and it is danger. Golini comes out. Look at this. Look at this. And oh, that's a goal. Just like that. 73rd minute. Liverpool showing no signs of attacking intent. All of a sudden, they get a decent play together. An unexpected cross inside the box. And Daniel Mylan gets his head on it to send us into a state of shock. Golini, who's been nothing short of exceptional tonight, has just conceded the equaliser. And what a vicious cross it was. And it's just a well-placed header to get Liverpool back in the game. Oh, James Madison. Could that be a bad ball? Or will Troy Parrott be able to run onto it? Van Dyke is running away. And the Irishman in the clear. He's going to take a pop. And it might be off the post or off Allison, but it's Robertson to clear. Oh no, Liverpool bringing on Alvaro Morata. That's when you know they want to lose this game. Oh, another cross. Get it out of there. All our defenders falling over and Golini has to bail us out time and time again. Let's get this clear and start a counter-attack, shall we? Kamara, we've made a couple of subs. A couple of runners in the middle. Kamara, back on over to Troy Parrott. Who needs to make his mark on this game. And in the 90th minute, this could happen. Troy Parrott for the 90th minute winner in stoppage time. It breaks Liverpool hearts. And there you go. That is revenge for 2019. Troy Parrott in front of the Reds faithful. He shows who's boss. And up until the very last second, he proves himself. They pushed and pushed and pushed. Kamara finding the defence splitting pass. Every little last lunge from the Liverpool defence wasn't going to work. And it's been beautifully set up by Bergwijn. I must admit, he's had chances and chances this game but finally in the biggest of moments he steps up and converts it into the bottom right hand corner that is surely the winner and he knows it and there you go the referee calls it there what a way to end the video Troy Parrott with the last laugh he's not only replaced Kane he's gotten better than Kane he's outscored Kane and he's also won the club more silverware and as a captain he gets to cap that all off and tie it in a nice little bow by winning the Champions League final and also avenging 2019 where Kane failed to lift the club to glory that has been replacing Harry Kane here at Tottenham Hotspur how they're gonna do it in real life I don't know I've literally just laid out the blueprint for them so Nuno Espirito Santo give me a ring or just watch this video and it'll be the key to all your success in the future. We've done it in the space of half a decade and we've still got some of the old Spurs faithful in the mix. I'll leave you guys with the celebration. Troy Parrott is just about to lift it up. The biggest trophy. They've done it. Spurs and Parrott are European champions. As always, I've been Sir BCHD. Make sure to drop the video a like down below. Hit subscribe, turn on the notifications and follow me on all my socials linked in the description. Have a great day and I'll catch you all in the very next video.